hello and welcome back to the channel um, as you see from the image on the screen what I'm going to be talking about initially I was gonna go right on by this story I've been seeing it popping up in my feed for the past few days I've seen a number of people uh, talking about it and a number of you have actually sent me uh, clips uh, dealing with this whole situation um, I decided to go ahead and speak on this because for me there's always something biblical to be gained from this I see what's happening here and a lot of you uh, from a secular standpoint don't know what I'm talking about when I when I say a lot of this stuff is prophesied you're like okay what is she talking about now but the basis of this story is the fact that we have this black man in the middle and we have these two women okay you have Rachel and you have Maria. And so a lot of people are talking about the fact that this black man um, basically came to the rescue of this white woman. He was rescuing the damsel in distress yet again. But there's more to it than that. There is a, a, a serious breach in the relationship between black men and black women, right? And on a world stage, everyone is watching and, and some even participating on the back end, um, doing little things here and there to further divide black men and black women. All right. And so this doesn't help when you have someone like Steven Jackson, who basically pokes his nose into something that he could have just remained silent on. Now he's trying to make it seem like he supports both women, right? But he is uplifting one, which is Rachel. He's putting her up on the pedestal. And although he claims that he is supporting Maria, his words are quite different than that. He says that Maria got a sympathy job. So basically, he insulted Maria, the black woman, in so many words by saying she got a sympathy job as if she's really not qualified for this. Rachel is more qualified. Rachel's been waiting for this, but they gave it to Maria. Now, I don't know um, the, the work performance of either of these women, right? I don't know that, right? But when this man sticks his nose into this and he tries to pretend to be defending both women, that just doesn't sound right and it doesn't look right. He would have did better to just keep his nose out of it. He's not the only one. There was another man, um, uh, both uh, two of her co-hosts, uh, they said that they support her as well. But then made Maria the ap afterthought. Like, um, um, and, we, and we support Maria too. You know, Maria is continuously the afterthought in these conversations. And we're talking about, so far, these three black males are the ones I'm talking about. This guy in the two hosts but one of them he came out saying look the only person I'm gonna stick my neck out for is my wife he came and did a video like that because he says at the end of the day I'm not losing my job over nothing so he basically I guess he felt he needed to go along just to survive in this world okay and he made that point very clear um if I remember I can leave a link to his video um, I should have um, included that in this here, but I'm not going to because I've already started, family. I've already started. But um, anyway, I want to go ahead and share with you um, Stephen Jackson's um, explanation as to why he did what he did. And you'll hear right from his own mouth that he believes that Maria got this job out of sympathy. So if he believes it's a sympathy job, then he must not believe that Maria is qualified but he does believe that Rachel is qualified. And so from a biblical standpoint, I see the handwriting all over this, the handwriting on the wall. And some of you may not get it, but I'll come back after I share this clip with you and um, I'll expound on that a bit more. Rachel did deserve that job. It's just, it's just plain and simple. I talked to Rachel and I, and I, and I know a lot of things she was saying out of frustration because ESPN put her in a bad position. And they even put Maria in a position of trying to give Maria a sympathy job. They was trying to make themselves look good because all the Black, black Lives Matter and the Black George and the George Floyd stuff was going on. So ESPN tried to make themselves look good by taking the job from Rachel that she had already had, that they'd already told her she had, that she deserved, and give it to Maria just to make themselves look good. It wasn't a genuine job they wanted to give Maria. 
It's ESPN is behind all this, bro. It's all their fault. You know what I'm saying? I can't blame Rachel. I love Rachel, and I'm going to stand behind to her. I spoke to her, and I'm going to stand behind Maria, too. But ESPN, y'all some suckers. Y'all some suckers because y'all did this. Y'all tried to give Maria a job, and it wasn't genuine. And look what happened. Come on, man. It's all ESPN fault. We love both of them. Think about this, though, bro. How many times we as black people have said that we was qualified? We know we qualified. We know we qualified for the job. But we didn't get it because they gave it to the white person just because he was white. How mad were we? Because they looking out for their own. How mad were we? When you know you deserve the job and they give it to a white person just because he white. We we've been dealing with that our whole life. And that pisses us off. We ain't getting recorded, but we say shit too behind closed doors. So I get it. I get it why Rachel mad. Rachel ain't never showed me no signs of being racist. But I would be mad too if I worked my whole life for a job and they gonna give it to a white dude just because Donald Trump in office or just because a white kid got killed and at the time it'll look better for a white person to have a job. I would be mad too. It's just the facts. I ain't trying to be like, I'm speaking the truth. We rocking with both of them, Maria and Rach, but this is the truth. And back one more thing for y'all, IG world. Y'all gotta be real with y'all selves. A lot of y'all can't be real with y'all selves and a lot of y'all looking for handouts. A lot of, a lot of y'all don't deserve nothing because you've been sitting at home not putting in the work and, and complaining about other people. Why they doing this? Why them and not me? But when you deserve something, when you work, when you put in the work for it, you should be mad when you don't get it. A lot of y'all won't understand that because y'all home still living off your mama, still living in your mama house and wondering why you ain't winning or ain't got nothing going on. I'm going to hit y'all with harsh truth. I am the face for equality. But I also, I also am the face of being black and proud and being strong and going to get what's mine, not asking no white person or nobody to give me nothing. I'm going to take what's mine, like I've been doing. But y'all quick to forget, when the, jump, when the jump first started, Rachel hired all black people. Remember that. I told y'all I'm going to make y'all hate me, because y'all, especially the people that don't like the truth. Half y'all hanging around niggas hoping that they make y'all dream come true and hanging around them. And as soon as they tell y'all, y'all tell y'all no, they a fuck nigga or they, they ain't real because they told you no because they tired of you benefiting off their blessing. You been around them all this time, been around all the people they been around, had the same connections, met the same people he met, but you still sitting around waiting for somebody to hand you something. Instead of you getting on your ass, doing something with the connections and making something work for yourself. A lot of y'all in this mind frame, and a lot of y'all stuck in this attitude of blaming, blaming white people for why you ain't made it. Yeah, we, we know we started off behind. They put us in a bad position from the jump. They got ahead, but it's time for you to learn. So for me, right, right away what comes to mind, a scripture that comes to mind um, after hearing all of this is, you know, having that evil eye one towards another. Although he pretends to be in support of both women, um, he's basically putting one up on a pedestal and putting one down, basically insulting her in a friendly way, you know, saying that this was some type of um, almost as if it was a, a charity type thing or a, a, a something that she didn't deserve, but they gave it to her anyway, because um, my friend Rachel deserves it, but Maria didn't. So that's what comes to mind. It comes to mind the scripture that talks about having an evil eye one towards another. And then also what we are seeing in the black community overall is that there is a serious breach in the relationships between black men and black women. Now, I don't know who Maria is married to. I don't know who Stephen is married to, okay? But there did seem to be a lot of investment in this conversation by Stephen. Uh, he seemed to be heavily invested in it. As, as a matter of fact, it seemed as though he was stepping away from the camera and coming back like, I got to put some more into this. I got to input some more into this conversation because I got to defend my girl, Rachel Nichols. That is the vibe that I got as I listened to him speak. And then he brought the whole struggle of black people into it to try to, I guess, get people to understand a point. And so this is again, him low-key insulting Maria by insinuating that she is not qualified for this job, that she does not deserve this job, and that Rachel does. That is the implication here. And so, for me, this shows the world yet again that there is no loyalty in the black community one towards another. 
In this case, it's the man against the woman, but we've seen cases of black women against black men as well. I have to say that because a lot of you in my uh, viewing and listening audience, um, you always say you're always coming after the men. You're all, and that is simply not true. I have over 1400 videos on this channel. And if you took the time to go back all of these years that I have been putting out content, you would see that I speak off, speak on the issues of black women as well as black men, as well as the black family structure, period, the black community, period. So all of that stuff about me always, and again, the word attacking too, come on now. It's not attacking someone if you're talking about issues, especially when I've made it a point to talk about a specific thing and that's the issue I'm talking about. How is that attacking all black men? It just so happens that Steven Jackson put himself, he inserted himself into the middle of this and if he equally thought that both women needed to be defended or that both women were qualified if he really thought that then his worry his words would have been different he all but said maria is not qualified and called this a sympathy job so if if someone is giving you a sympathy job that's basically saying that you're really not qualified for it maria um rachel is and so um i support rachel Okay, I support you too, but I support Rachel. I talk to her and, and she's never been racist towards me. Oh my goodness. Whenever I hear any black person say that, it just makes me cringe because um, I spoke many years ago about uh, white friends that we've had. You know, when we lived in Michigan, we um, did business with a lot of white people. Okay. And I recall one um, incident where we were talking to one of our, um, at the time, one of our business partners in real estate. And he went on to say that black people are the most racist people in the world, right? Because he had a few incidents in the city of Detroit. And we sat there, we didn't argue, but we had a conversation with him about it. It was like, no, that's not true. You know, that's not true that black people are the most racist people in the world. And we defended our position very well. We say, you can't look at the fact that um, some thug um, looks at you and they have no respect for you because they know the history that we have with white people. And so they look at you and they don't have respect. They don't have a reverence for you like a lot of black people do. And they're, they're not looking at you like you're God walking around. I say, you can't look at that and say that black people are racist. Some people are fed up, right? And so as we talking to him, um, most of what he was talking about was some of his negative experiences with black people. And I'm like, that doesn't equate to us being the most racist people on the planet. If you want to pull up a report card, come on now, I can get you a list. I can get you a list of who's gone from continent to continent, having their way, taking, stealing, killing, and destroying. I can get you a list, right? And so their viewpoint sometimes is very different even when they are uh, quote unquote friends quote unquote friends Stephen Jackson it doesn't mean that they don't have racist ideologies and views and the friend that we had at the time we were able to speak to him like this because that's how our relationship was we were able to just tell our point of view because Especially me, I'm not no chicken when it comes to conversations like this. If you're going if you're gonna open up the floor for the conversation, I will finish it. If you put that bit of information out there and you believe that this is how it is, then you just open up the door and you've br brought me to the floor to speak my piece as well. And so even though this friend was nice to us, I still knew and understood very well that there was a superiority complex there, okay? Now, I didn't experience that with all of my white friends, I must say that, but with some of them, we did. I mean, we had a, an, a real estate appraiser that we did business with a lot, and he showed absolutely no evidence of being racist, right? But that is not to say that he, he wasn't, but what we saw wasn't there, but I would never say that, oh, he's not this or that. 
because you don't know what a person says when they are behind closed doors. I mean, I think Stephen Jackson himself said something to that effect as well. But um, anyway, um, back to the biblical position on this. The scripture talked about how this divide would be here. And we are seeing it more and more. These other nations, they are confederate one with another while we continue to rise up against one another. These other nations, they look, they smile, they laugh, and and they say, mm, mm, mm. look at them. They can't do anything. They can't, as a matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and close this out. I was going to say something, you know, about um, a video that someone shared with me. I will say this much, but it was a Gentile male commenting on what he observes from black males against black women and he talked about he went on to talk about why they don't do it they won't do to their white women what black men do to black women okay and so this right here is a yet another scar or should i say a deep gash even though stephen jackson may not feel that way it is still a deep gash in the relationship between black men and black women because here this man is jumping all over this when he could have just taken a position of you know what i'm gonna stay out of it he could have taken the taken that position of saying i will stay out of this if you felt like both of these women were your friends and both of them um, did an amazing job at the work that they do you should have stayed out of it but when you lend your voice in this and you position yourself right in the middle of this you insert yourself into the stephen what you did when you opened your mouth it showed your allegiance towards Rachel Nich Nichols and showed that you don't believe that Maria deserved the job. So I am done with this topic. Of course, I look forward to hearing your views on this subject. So until next time. We hope you liked today's topic. Please leave your comments below. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, share and like this video. And with that, we're out. Be sure to ring the bell to be notified of new uploads on this channel and also comment, share, like, and subscribe.